Oh! Oh, you gotta be quicker than that! Oh! Oh! <laughs> Welcome back to SOS. I'm Staff Sergeant Badass. Sleeping Cup. And today we're going to continue the Outbreak series. Ooh! What? Five, four, three, two, one. What? What? Uh, which one are we on? Number five. Okay, we're on number five now? Mm hmm. Sweet. Yep. Okay. So number five, tetanus. And I was going to do botulism with it, but botulism, there's a lot to botulism. There's more than one type. So I'll be discussing botulism in another video because it's like two pages worth of notes. So Seems pretty big. But yeah, botulism and tetanus, definitely number five. And tetanus, what Te do you think? Tetanus would probably be important in combat situation for example shrapnel maybe just saying grid goes down can you imagine oh man how much just metal sharp objects everywhere i mean a lot of people are going to be doing activities they don't normally do with blades and chopping stuff they don't they're not used to chopping stuff and uh, you know it could lead to random cuts and mm -hmm. not knowing how to take care of it is part of it, but not having your technus is going to be a major part of it. Mm -hmm. So staying up on something like that. It's every, how many years? Ten. Ten years? Every ten years? So get your technus. That's definitely one of those ones. Mm -hmm. Definitely before a grid goes down, just saying. Yep. But I have another way you can do it, but I'll talk about that here in a minute. You gotta so, drag it out. Mm -hmm, definitely. <laughs> so, of course, tetanus you can also get, it's mostly through contaminated soil by animal feces. It's not just sharp, rusty objects, which a lot of people think about. And, of course, you know, grit goes down. <laughs> Nobody's gonna be out there picking up their dog's crap. No. I mean, you're gonna have animal population exploding in some areas, and poop's gonna be everywhere. So, the next time. You find something that you need and you pick it up and it's on the ground covered in dirt or whatever. It's just always make sure to wash your hands too, people, before you put it in your mouth because tetanus can be a nasty exotoxin that you cannot use any type of antibiotic to get rid of. Yeah, waste system's going to be down too mm -hmm. in SHTF. Yep. And a possibility of that grid down. Yeah, so of course, you know, it's tetanus, it goes into your circulatory system, and it inhibits your muscle relaxation. So, of course, a lot of people know the first sign and symptom of that is your lockjaw. Mm. And it can get so bad that uh, your muscles start contracting, contracting to where you end up arching, and it can fracture and break your spine. And I actually have a picture in here that was taken of a British soldier who had a case, it was like the 1800s of tetanus so bad that his spine broke. And that's it right there. Oh man, this one here? Yeah. That's real wow. deal. Yep. And yeah, it's, it's nasty. So basically if you don't have your tetanus shot, what you can do is what they did kind of like in the 1800s when they started seeing a lot of it during war times is they actually inoculated the horses with it and the horses would build up the antibodies and they would take the serum out of the horses and they would inject it to people so the people had the antibodies of that horse into their blood system so they build up their own antibodies and that's what you can do if you know somebody and got the needles or tools that you can take their blood, their serum, and inject it into you, and maybe your body can Dang. do your own antibodies. I always love doing these videos because you always teach me something. Because I, I, we never talk about this before we come mm -hmm. back here. You just start doing this, and I'm like, wow, I had no idea. That's cool. Yep. And say, for example, if you end up stepping on that rusty nail or you walk by and you get sliced by that jagged scrap of metal. Another option is you can cut cut it out. Cut the infected tissue out. 
because it's an obligated um, aerobe microbe, so it has to have air to thrive and survive. So you can cut that infected tissue out. You just, you know, of course, got to be careful of putting other infections in your body. But it's just something else to throw out there. Wow. Yeah. So I think I got everything from that. Oh, and it can also, of course, you know, cause your lung muscles to paralyze and your cardiac muscles to paralyze. So it's Dang. it's not good i mean of course you know every time if you scrape yourself on metal or whatever it's not a guarantee like oh you automatically have it but it's just something to keep situation or environment situational awareness definitely want to stay up on your tetanus shot <laughs> yes just tetanus say. shots do help because it's an inactive toxin that makes your body respond to that antigen or the antibody so you make your antigens so it'll definitely kill it off a lot faster than if you didn't have it now it's not a death sentence if you don't have it but it's still a fairly high mortality rate so this is something good to have wow yep all right so number four malaria now wrap your mind around this people so grid goes down now, who's going to be controlling the pests? You're going to have your mm. your local, uh, what's that guy? Orkin uh, man or something? Orkin guy, yeah. Yeah. Call him, pay him, you know, help a couple hundred bucks to do your house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, when the Zika virus was sp spreading oh, and man. they went just like complete like napalm. <laughs> oh, there were napalm in neighborhoods. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, to get rid of those um, mosquitoes. Well, malaria... Is in mosquitoes, right? So, explosion of mosquitoes. Mm. And it actually used to be um, U.S. Um, it was spread out throughout the whole U.S. at one point until we got these pest control companies going. And it's actually now starting to kind of make a little bit of a comeback in like Florida and Louisiana and Georgia, the humidity yeah the humidity and all that other stuff well it's the puddles and stuff that make more uh, make yeah, more mosquitoes that's stagnant they're drawn water. to stagnant water and so that's another thing to make sure you know you don't have any stagnant water laying around your area yeah breeding pool for mosquitoes at least not sleeping next to it would be a good idea or yeah camping next to it definitely so malaria is hardcore what it basically does is it infects your red blood cells. And this is a virus that it spreads so fast. I mean, you're talking about a billion little microscopic parasites just like erupting into your bloodstream within like an hour. Mm. And it just basically causes your red blood cells to get destroyed. And every time those red blood cells destroys, it spreads out and infects other red blood cells. So... When you're getting so many of your red blood cells infected, of course, you can't carry your oxygen, your gas exchange going down, so that leads to severe anemia, you're feeling fatigued and tired, and, you know, those, those are the, the signs and symptoms, and of course, fever and vomiting, but you can also have other diseases that have those same symptoms, so what they do is they do just a blood smear, and so... I mean, even if somebody has like a little microscope and some slides, you just smear a little blood on that. And if you look in there, you'll see on the blood cells, it'll have little circles hmm. inside the cells. And that's how you know you got malaria. And I mean, it's still pretty bad today, but it's mostly, of course, in Africa where, you know, it kills about two to four million people a year. But imagine if we had no more um Doctors Without Borders, and I mean, no oh, more man. hospitals. Can you imagine oh, how, how bad it would just explode? I, I still don't understand. Like, you know, I, I did this whole, like, grit down video a long time ago, and I was explaining to people all the stuff that would happen in that video, and um, I didn't name off all this that we're talking about now. Yeah. And... And, and people, you know, when I said how many people would probably survive is such a low, low percentage. Mm -hmm. This is all the stuff I'm factoring in is all the stuff that's going to take place from not having a regular physician anymore. Or, 
you know, a hospital or any of that other stuff. But you got to take in consideration all the stuff that's going to stop working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> People right. don't even think about that stuff. Yeah. You got all the stuff that is required to function for all these people and yet it won't be there anymore functioning but it's on such a large scale it's going to be a large scale impact yep and you know it's not just mosquitoes you can get it from you can get it from used needles now i mean hopefully by the time if like say you accidentally end up pricking yourself on a needle it's the the virus is going to die pretty fast because of the air so hopefully you know wouldn't be it's basically got to be shared needles yeah but, and, you know, on top of just it destroying your, your red blood cells, it, all the cells that have died are going to start clumping and blocking your capillaries and it can't reach to your spleen because your spleen is the organ that will filter your blood. It gets all those microscopic organisms out. So, you know, there, that's just another cause of death right there. Hmm. It's going to, malaria will also lead you more susceptible to other diseases that your body won't be able to filter out. Dang. So the mortality rate's about 50% or higher if untreated. And the two treatments that they say uh, work is uh, malarone or chloro- chloroquine are the two ones that usually you know, travelers will get, and I guess it's kind of pricey, so, of course, the pharmaceutical companies don't want to give it to the poor people in Africa, because they won't make a profit, but, anyways, I guess that's politics. So, anyways, that was number four. What's next? (laughs) Alright, number three, undulated fever. You need to throw it further. I do. (laughs) Brucelliosis. Now, that is something that is the most worldwide spread bacteria from animals to humans. So you get, it's mostly in cattle, but you can find it in sheep and goats, pigs, Hmm. camels, and usually it's more abundant in the Middle East because they don't unpasteurize, uh, their milk is unpasteurized. So that's one of the main reasons how the bacteria spreads and it is important important to pasteurize meat. it is yeah. meat and milk yeah. very yeah. very important um it's not usually fatal right away but it is a persistent little disease and it will evade your immune system and it will keep replicating and replicating so bad to eventually i mean it could take years Eventually, it can attack any organ in your system. It's unbiased. It'll destroy whatever it wants. And it can become airborne. And this is something that um, the CDC and other uh, organizations have talked about that could be the next uh, bioterrorist weapon, like anthrax. Um, That's kind of what they're in fear of with this one. How far could it go airborne is a good question. Well, you think it go pretty far? Yeah, it's endospores. So it's not like a droplet where it dries out. Mm. It's a spore. So it'll travel everywhere. And it'll stay um, in hibernation until it germinates, which, you know, from ingestion or, you know, inhalation and stuff like that. So with that being said, too... If you have animals that are infected with diseases, viruses, one should probably be careful on how you kill your kill. Definitely. And you have experience about... A lot of it. A lot of it about how messy it is to slaughter pigs. People would people would leave the room fast. They didn't know what to do. I always... Because you worked at a slaughterhouse, right? Slaughterhouse for, for a long time. Uh, I used to cut the faces off of hogs, and I had to sharpen my knife over and over again. People say, you don't know anything about sharpening knives. But that's all I did all day long was sharpen a knife. But people would leave. Uh, I would get Billy, you know, Billy would get hired, and uh, he bought a new truck, and he would come in, and uh, he kept asking me when a, when a lunch break was so he could leave the building. He, uh, and then I would go to the break room, and, hey, where's Billy? Billy ran out to his truck and took off. He's gone now. 
Yep, wouldn't last long. It, it's just the side of it, and especially if you cut the juggler of an animal and it comes back to life mm -hmm. without its face, it's actually pretty freaky. And I tongue flopping around works. everywhere, no eyelids. Anyway, um, but they they salvaged every piece of the meat. So, right. um, and a, and a, you know, slaughtering hogs, you you take the the, the hide goes to uh, Wolverine boot companies and stuff like that. You know, they make the boots. You know, the boots, Red Wing, and all that stuff. People love that stuff. Yeah, but you're in a controlled, like <laughs> controlled, air conditioned, systematic assembly line. Who's gonna cut? Yeah. Who's gonna carve? Oh, I mean, we had one person that just did hearts. That's all they did was the hearts. Like they would literally slice open the inside and pull the belly out and all this stuff and you know remove from around the butt and all that. So I had to cut around the butt a few times. You get promoted, you know, you get promoted from butts yeah. to... <laughs> I guess brown nosing does you move, get you promoted. You move from slicing butts and removing everything else to insides to moving on. But yeah, I can process process something pretty quick if, if I had to. But most so, people can't, you know, they'd be like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you know to step away when you're cutting the neck because that jugular is going to oh, yeah. spray it in... Lord we turn. Knows, I, get it in your face. When I did jugglers, I would turn it away from me and then stab and then just kind of do a jerk and it just pull it out and it just. There you go. Uh, sometimes I just did both sides most times and I just keep them. They flow out the sides and run down the body and then move it on to the next one. Yeah, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're dissecting your kill. Yep. Just. Don't try to not get those fluids. I mean, if you yeah, have cuts keep the fluids off you. on your skin, hopefully you have some type of barrier so it's not getting inside your skin too because that will also cause infection. That would be great for an SHTF cooking show, slaughtering yeah. the hog live. Yep. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> no. no. Um, but yeah, and we had a couple of case outbreaks in the U.S. because uh, it's... It was densely populated more in Mexico, and so from their goats, when they made their goat cheese and they transported it here in the United States, people would get sick. So, you know, you can't get sick from the cheese and yeah, because it's just it's not pasteurized correctly. And the uh, tall tail sign and symptom for that is you're going to have a fever going up and down, up and down, up and down continuously. That's the main one because I mean. Besides that, you know, you get your typical, you know, fever, chills, night sweats that hundreds of other things can cause, too. Mm. And just like anthrax, you have to stay on your antibiotics for at least six weeks. This is something that you've got to continuously take because, like I said, it's persistent. It will lay dormant in your, in your system, and when you think, oh, okay, I'm feeling better, mm. it pops back up. And the ones that they say is tetracycline and streptomycin. Mm. You have to have those two together. You can't just take one or the other. There you go. Number three. In your face. Is that better? <laughs> That's better. Okay. Now, <laughs> number two. I could not think number two because I wanted two number ones because I think they're equally tied neck and neck in different ways. Okay. So we'll do one B. Influenza, mm. the virus. That is something that has stayed on this earth since the walk of man. Mm. Something that is always continuously changing. You cannot take antibiotics for it. Mm. And of course, I'm sure you know people, when they think of influenza, the Spanish flu, yeah. 1918, 20 to 50 million people. And you know, it can go through birds as mm. well. And it's just, it's a nasty, it's, it's a virus. And it's so it can affect other creatures mm -hmm. besides humans, even though humans are the weakest Yeah, like creatures. the bird flu. I mean, the bird flu wasn't like a pandemic or anything, yeah. but still, you know, you're talking about no hospitals, no nowhere to go to get your IV fluids in. And it's just, it's always changing and it can be... Mm. Really, really severe, like the Spanish flu, or just you know, mild case of flu, headache, chills, fever, vomiting. But the Spanish flu was actually the H1N1, and we did have another outbreak of that in 2009, 
but it wasn't as strong, thankfully. Yeah. It so it didn't cause quite a calamity, of course. When you tell someone there's H one N one, most people are just like, "Oh, that's that bird thing," you know. Nobody's really that worried about it. They're like, "Oh, whatever," you know. But it, it's kind of a big deal, and you know, it's it's mm -hmm. one of those things like, man, you, you better pay attention to that. That's probably a little bit important. Yeah, and in my mind, I mean, that's where I think getting the flu shot is just useless because mm -hmm. you hear it year after year. By the time you know you get your flu shot, the virus has changed from yep. H one N two to H one N three. That's, and that shot is just useless. That's something I've learned from you. I don't even do the flu shot anymore. I haven't done it in years. I never got the flu shot. I haven't had, yeah, we haven't had the flu in, I don't know, over 10 years. But I think, oh, well, you know, the hospital makes you do that. But stuff. the hospital well, this yeah. year says you have yeah, to do you it. You have to do it, so. Uh, un <laughs> unfortunately for her, she has to get it now. But <laughs> You I, will. Yeah, you will do <laughs> you this. will obey. Obey and follow, but it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's work-related. But, I mean, you still hear, you know, thirty to 50,000 people die from it a year, the, the babies and the elderly, and, of course, that's why, you know, domestic chickens, they feed them antibiotics because they're also something that is very susceptible to viruses, too, um, your livestock. Yep. And, you know, there's different types of flu because you have the flu... That will attack your respiratory system. And then there's the flu course that's the nosh, the vomiting, nauseous, sweats, fever, chills, and stuff like that. And the only thing that they, you know, I'm sure everybody's seen the commercials that has recently come out was the Tamiflu. And, uh, what is it? Uh, Relenza. Uh, Relenza is the ones that's just uh, you inhale and then the Tamiflu is the one that you eat and what that does is within 30 hours of having the signs and symptoms it just suppresses the virus it doesn't destroy it but it'll suppress it long enough to hopefully your bodies will start building up the antibodies hmm. to kill it off so it just it'll cut the duration down but i mean think of how much fluid loss you would get from throwing up mm -hmm. and just it you know, people have had the flu, you know, would you feel like you feel like crap? You can't mm -hmm. do anything. You can't get any work done. If you had it during grid down. Man, you, uh, that's what I'm telling <laughs> you. You better have a, a medic. You better have somebody that knows how to stick a, you know, or, IV saline in your, in your veins. Or learn what you can mm -hmm. before something bad happens. YouTube it. No. YouTube makes <laughs> it so simple. <laughs> I did it just out of curiosity. S H T F YouTube. Help. YouTube how to insert an IV. <laughs> no, that's, I'm just saying it's stuff you would learn before something bad happens. Because yeah, grids down, you're not going to have YouTube anymore. Yeah. You know, there's going to be a lot of people that are like, oh, YouTube it. Eh, dang it. <laughs> yeah. System down. My phone doesn't work. Oh. Well, you, you guys know what I'm being. Not dirty. <laughs> I'm just messing you. Get out of here. I'm just jiving you, woman. You are. That's what I do. A good jiver. Yep. So, yep, that's pretty much influenza virus. It's just always going to be on this earth, I think. It's just how bad it's going to be. Who knows? And it's one of those things where, you know, you can, it's so easily just catchable. Yeah. You can wipe out your whole campsite. Keep that medic. All right, so 1A. 1A. Somebody was already asking me about this. They're like, well, but you didn't listen. List this, this, this. And I'm like, wait till my top five. Wait. Cholera. You know, of course I was going to put cholera as like pretty much the number one. Because cholera is something that we still experience today and will forever experience because, you know, you got poor sanitation qualities. Of course, I'm sure people remember Haiti and how bad they got it. Um with that storm and everything, their houses, everything got wiped out. And, you know, of course you get it from poop being in the water. And when you're pooping and you don't realize other people's poop might be contaminating in your water and you don't have a very sanitary, you know, camp set up, you're going to die. Hmm. You are going to die because cholera is... An organism that likes to attach itself into your intestines and your body's response to get rid of it is to flush it out. Mm -hmm. So, how's your body flush it out? Vomiting and diarrhea. Mm. You can lose three to five gallons a day 
the fluids just because your body's like, you got to flush it, you got to flush it, you got to get it out, get it out, and you're losing your electrolytes and your potassium. I mean, it's just, your body's going to end up going to shock and you're going to have organ failure and you're going to just end up pretty much dying. Because you can't get it out. You can't get it out. And, you know, the, this is another very, very important reason to know how to do IVs because they say that is the most effective way of getting rid of cholera is intravenous IV saline because you're IV. replacing it with not only your fluids, but it has the electrolytes in it. Now, you can use antibiotics too because of you know, of course, the both combined is going to be the best way. And uh, that's doxis, doxicillin or doxycline. Yeah, something like that. I told you before I hate pronouncing antibiotics, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to, you know, kill it off so your body can at least ease up and not keep flushing your system out. Yeah. Because a cholera will travel very, very fast in water and... Uh, you you can kill it, of course, with bleach, and you can even strain it out by using, what is it, several folds of layer of finely woven cloth. Like, what do you pronounce it, the saris that the Indian women wear? I don't know I'm not I, sure. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not sure, but that kind of material, yeah. you can filter it out okay. by using that way, too. But yes, that's something that you need to think about, making sure you have... Saline isn't easy to get either, saline solution. That was another thing that we were talking about uh, a while back, saline solution, how hard it is to get stuff like that. And well... Well, we could get into something like that in, in the video. In all honesty, you can rig up your own IV solution. Yeah. I, I mean, we can't... Adding salt and sugar and doing your own... And that would be for another video. Yeah, that'd be for another That's video because, of course, you know those those medical supplies aren't going to last forever. But there are methods to where you can do your own IV solution. Because someone, you know, someone out there in, in the world would be like, "Hey, you know, well, you know, where do I get this stuff from? And this stuff and this stuff." Because there have been questions about, "Hey, Sippy, where do you shop? You know, where do you buy your stuff at?" Well, we'll do a video about stuff like that in the future. Yeah. Because I know Dr. Bones, I've gotten some supplies through him. Um, he has his own yeah, Dr. Bones and her website Sammy. of supplies that he kind of organized. Some. some of them are pricey, though. Yeah, it is pricey. So I guess you shop around, but that's just... And, you know, most of these people are trying to sell stuff, and but some of these people sell good stuff. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Yeah. I'm not knocking them. They sell good stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of them out there that in the world of YouTube that sell good stuff. Mm-hmm. Keep that in mind. So there you go. The top ones I think are Nick Nick is uh, the flu and cholera. There you go. So uh, it, go back and jot these down. I don't think we're going to type these in, are we? No. It's get just, your it, microbiology book, people. Get you a book. It has the list of the diseases, the symptoms. It does pictures. Yep. Geographic sites it has antibiotics antibiotics how it's to use all them in a little table. Well, what they're used for yeah it's got all that stuff in it yeah you wouldn't think so i wouldn't think so uh we My did a live book. we did a live podcast mm -hmm. uh a couple of vids back it was the x files one and someone while we were in the chat room left the chat room went to i think ebay or someplace yep. like that or amazon, amazon 20 bucks found that book for 20 dollars. 20 bucks 20 bucks microbiology there you go and it's got all the stuff you need right there. And you won't have to worry about that stuff. It's already jotted down mm -hmm. for you. I know. This is like probably my fifth time mentioning it, but I mentioned yeah. it for a good reason. It is very, very, very awesome. Broken down yeah. simply enough to where you can understand. And park this book next to an updated version of the PDR. Mm -hmm. Get that one too. The PDR is another good book to have. Yep. Uh, yeah. And your pill book. Pill book's always good to have an updated version of. Yep. I hope this helps. Is that all we got? That's all we got. T Rex fell on the floor. Poor yep. guy. I'll do botulism in another video. Okay. Well, you're watching SOS. I'm Stasar Badass. Sippy Cup. And take it easy.